let's talk about what to do Friday. Okay. Now, just so you know, I will not give you an assignment just for Fridays. I know some of your school teachers are doing that piece of ha -hud. Um, That's not what Fridays are for. Fridays not to penalize you. Fridays to give you a chance to get everything worked out. So anyway, um, so what you guys have uh, coming up is you have two pre-assessments, one for each class. I knew those are the first of the year, and again, I'm not really overly concerned about your grade. You are because it's probably pulling your grade down right now. Just coast a little bit. We'll get some grades and then it'll go back up. When that closes on Friday, I'll go in and I'll tweak the grade points so that you aren't so bad off, okay? So I'll do a little curve action on there, okay? So just bear with it. It's gonna be a little sad right now. Um, it is set to multiple retakes. You only need to do it once, but if you get kicked out um, because we've been having some power outages in the valley, so I can make it work. And so I have to do a little things that are not quite standard for online, and that's okay. So you have one in, arc, in tech one, you have one in tech two. They're very different lakes. There's a little bit of overlap in the tech two that's done in tech one because they build on each other, okay? Um, then you have um, 1.4 in tech one, which is geometric thinking. I think most of you have done that one now. So it's just about shapes. Yay! Then we have 2.2.4, it's engineering drawing and sheet sizes. Um, we're gonna be working with that mainly next week, but we gotta set up a sheet size for what we're doing right now so it fits on the paper. So I need you to do that. It shouldn't take you maybe 20 minutes. It's not terribly long. Okay. Now on these, they're set up as quizzes because that's how I automatically grades. I put them as assignment, then you gotta upload a paper and that just takes longer. We won't do too many of those. There's a few, but not too many. So if you get one of these as a quiz, it, they're all set to give you the answers. They're all set to multiple retakes. So listen carefully how this works. When you go through it, write down the correct answer, then go back and do it again. That's not cheating, that's research, okay? So you've gone through it, you mess up, you find out what the right answer is, then you go back and you fix it. I, I expect you to do that because then there's really no reason for you not to have an A, right? And you've learned what you need to learn. Okay, so that's kind of how I work it. What is this? Here. Um, in tech two, so you've got a, a, an assessment and two quizzes in one in, in tech two, you have a te uh, an assess the skill test, pre-test. You have pre, well, and then line type worksheet, just that. So there's what, five things in two weeks, right? You guys can handle that, right? Now the, the line type sheet is um, kind of really important because that is on the state skills test as well. And we're gonna spend a lot of time with line types. So we'll be reviewing those all semester. Okay. Questions online, people. Any questions from you guys? No. Cool. Fine. Griffin's always saying no. That's his button. He has a no button. All right. Any questions from you guys here on what to do Friday? Is it doable? Yeah, it's doable. I will, and you'll see that. So, what I did is not knowing where we were going to be at, I built this as a full online course. So everything is in there, but that means you're not here. So as long as we're here, I'll take things off. So that's why you're not seeing week three or unit three open up because it'll depend on where we're at, what we're doing in class. Um, and I know some of you like to pick through and check all the weeks out and see what's coming. You can't, they're closed. I'm not gonna give you more than a week at a time because I don't know what the great cosmos is gonna do to us. And we wanna make sure we're ready to go, okay? Um, software, okay, let's talk about the software real quick. I put the, the information, let me see if I can pull that back up. If I get things around the world. Got too many windows open, how did that happen? It's payroll, I don't know. Lost my course. Okay, whoops. 
because I watch the stories this morning. Whoa, what's David Archuleta doing on my YouTube feed? Huh? Good boy. By the way, have you ever listened to his new album, Therapy Sessions? It's pretty deep. It's kind of sad, but it's deep. All right. Uh, I'm going to go into the announcements here. And can you guys see that on your screen, Sam and Griffin? Yes. Okay. All right, good. So I'm trying to make sure we get everything. Um, what I'm going to come down here is uh, the do, 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 do. SOLIDWORKS download right down here. Okay. Now, when you do SOLIDWORKS, it is by far easier to download than AutoCAD. It is like, like they like you. Okay. So you'll need to go to this website. It'll take you right there. This is your student design kit ID. That is basically the serial number for the software you then get. Well, the access key, and then there's your serial number. Just copy and paste this in, okay? Because it's long, if you mess it up, yeah, don't get the software, okay? Your software's good for a year and three months. There's an overlap, okay? And then we can keep you updated as long as you're students, okay? So that one's pretty straightforward and easy. It needs just as much computer capacity as AutoCAD does. AutoCAD, however, is a beast. So I'm going to walk you through this again in case you missed it, because it's kind of important at this point. You need to go to autodesk.com. And the first thing you need to do is create an account. You have to have an Autodesk account. Okay. Now, we, and if you're going to be here the whole time, you don't. We're going to be done with AutoCAD hopefully by the end of next week, because I'm compressing a quarter into two weeks, three weeks. Whoa. Yeah. That's the kind of teacher I'm. I like to do more, faster, stronger, better, because we learn more. So there's a lot. I've got so much to teach. It's crazy. Okay. So we're going to be out of AutoCAD here pretty quick, but you still need AutoCAD for other applications. And especially if you're looking at work, it's something good to work through. Um, I used to make uh, CD case covers for it with AutoCAD. You can do everything in AutoCAD. It's pretty universal. So you make your account. Then you have to sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in. What? Most of my passwords, okay. Okay, so you get signed in. And I know Griffin and Sam finally got this worked out. You, if you then do this, you need to send me an email. I have to send you a custom personalized letter. I tried to do the blanket um, letter for everybody, and they rejected it. So now I have to do one for each of you at a time. That's 189 students. But I'm willing to do it because it's important, okay? So I send you a letter. It's going to be in a PDF form because you can't submit a Word document. The name on that letter must match what you used to sign into AutoCAD. That's where it gets tricky. So if you're using a middle initial and I don't put a middle initial on, then they don't match. Okay. So if you could, when you send that email, let me know what name you're using to sign into. And you have use your school email, the Granite Schools email. That's one that's recorded with Autodesk. Then you go to the menu. You're going to go to downloads. And don't do the free trial. That's only good for 14 days. And then you get a bill for $6,998. Okay. You want to do free, free, free student. Okay. Once you go here, then you can come down and you can download whatever you want. Now, does that you, do any of you guys have a 3D printer at home? We got to that point. Okay. So Tinkercad and Fusion 360 are really friendly with um, home uh, 3D printers. They work really well with those. So there's a couple that might be a little exciting for you. Um, so does Inventor. But, um, and if you're, into, if you're taking animation, if you want to be a gamer, you might want to look at 3D Max and Maya. But all of these software are yours, but you have to have that letter submitted first before you can do this. Okay? Questions? None. We're all back to quiet mode. That's week two. Cool. Week two for you is like week four for me. Okay. Dog years. I love it. All righty, my friends. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. We're in the middle of making a base drawing for an, for an Arbor Press. Get the grammar right. And what we're going to do is we're trying to reproduce this sheet. The sheet is found in your course, right? It's under Arbor Press project in the Tech 2 course. So I'll 
I'm blurring these two together. So we're doing two classes at once. Okay, so we're gonna be fun, fancy free and all that good stuff. So this is what we're working on. We got to this point and um, some of you are a little lost, okay? So we're gonna go over and redo this again, okay? And then I'm gonna post this class back on what seems to be three hours long. Yay, um, I'll redo the video and then put it back on YouTube again. Not sure why I do not have sound, but that's okay, we'll fix it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through this again. If you have this all done, well, you don't know what to do next. Ha ha, okay, great teachers. I need to have a front view, a top view, and a side view when this is all done, okay? So that's kind of the goal here, okay? Are you guys okay if I run through this where we're at right now with their run through it one more time? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So Dr. Paskett? Uh, yes. Uh, my screen's blank. Yes. It's just black. It's just showing black. Uh, Griffin, is that the case for you too? No. No. It's just Sam's black. Um, what would cause that? Is it because she hasn't put any lines on the actual thing because she hasn't been in class? No, have you got AutoCAD open? Uh, no, it's just what she can't see on her screen what I'm showing. Is that right, Samantha? Yeah, I can't see. I can't see. Yeah, I can oh, see it. Oh, goodness. Let's see. What would cause that? Let's try that again. Anything now? Did that help? Nope. Okay, you nab it. Let me do that. Blank screen, not seen. What kind of computer are you on? Um, I'm using my phone because I'm on the software on my phone, on my computer, so I can do both at the same time. Okay. I'm wondering if the screen ha doesn't have enough resolution for what we're doing. Maybe I can try on my computer. Let me, yeah, try to do that and then, because you can split your screen on your computer and do two different windows. Yeah. Try that, let's see if that'll work. Okay, while we're doing, while she's changing screens, I'm gonna start to start a new file. And you can just click these little tabs. You don't have to go up file new, just click those little pluses. And that will start a new um, tab for you. And what we're going to do, I need to make sure this thing's recording now too, dang it. It is, okay. So what we did is I went in, we created our units, is what we start with, always. Start with units. And that's to bring up this little dialog box. I wanna change my precision. Uh, we took it down to three decimals, I believe. And then we just want to stay in decimal value. Again, we could choose some of these others, but we're going to stay in decimal. And I'm going to stay in inches because it's a small drawing, okay? So pretty small. We looked at that you could go and do, um, you know, light years, but we're not going to. That's crazy. Um, I do have a project if you want to. We can model the solar system. It will take you a few months, but it's kind of trippy. All right, how are we doing, Sam? Are we getting closer? Yeah, I got it. Oh, good, okay. Now, the next thing I did is I created a layer. So I went to my layer properties. We create a new layer with a starburst. So we click new. I gave it a name. And we just call this on lines because that was pretty basic and simple. We take this little um, parallelogram and we double click on it with the left mouse button that makes it current. We then just went through and changed the color to one of your choosing, and you get several to pick from. And I chose red because it shows up better on the screen. And then I had you change the line weight. And the line weight is based, just think about mechanical pencils, like 0.5, um, 0.7. And I had to go right in the middle to 0.6 on that. So 0.6 millimeter pencil. 
Uh, do you guys want some lights out here in the classroom? Yeah. Okay. Can you just go switch those out? Now, that means your hands have to stay above the table. No holding hands. That's funnier when there's girls in the class. Okay, so then we hit okay. At this point, I'm ready to draw. I notice in my layers that that's my current layer shows there. I can change it by just choosing one up there. Makes it quick and easy. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of my layer properties because that's not needed. And I'm ready to draw. So I'm gonna do a line. And my first line is going to be a, a coordinate input, zero, well, that's an O, zero comma zero. And that will start me right at the origin point. And again, this is the Cartesian grid. So all that math crap that people say you'll never use, you're using all of it. And even stuff you don't even know yet, okay? So if you get, so those of you who go on into college or even to some of your industries, and you're trying to figure out a problem, draw it. It solves the math for you in most cases. If you can draw it out, you can solve your math, okay? Now, we drew up, we went straight up, and I wanna make sure my lines are straight. So the hot key for that is F8. And last night, I put in all of AutoCAD 2020 hotkeys for you. They're in the announcements, so you can look at those at home. Um, and there's more than you'll ever use. Okay, there's like a hundred of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight up and I'm gonna type in 2.5. Is that right? Yep, 2.5 and enter. Now that should be just a little bitty line and I'm gonna bold my line so you can see it a little bit better. There it is, okay. So I went up 2.5. Now I need to draw an angle. So again, then put in the coordinates for that angle. And we determined that my x value is going to be 0 0.69. And my comma, my y, is going to be 1. And I hit enter. And that puts me up at the top. So I have to figure out the coordinates for each corner on my drawing. Then it's going to drag across. And this one we had to do some math on. So we had to take um, 0.933 minus 0.69, and that level was 0 0.24, what was it? Just 0.24, works for me, thanks. Boom. Okay, now we're there. Now we can come straight down at this point. How far down did we go? So I come down and match this corner here. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get zoomed up on here. You see those dotted lines when you pull things out? You see those dotted lines? I need a laser pointer somewhere. I'm needing feedback. Okay, those projection lines will let you do something like this. If I float over this endpoint, I can now get an exact match to that length. Notice it's at one now. That's the value I need. So the drawing will help draw itself. If you use your projection points, you can get everything to line up just the way you want it. So hit this end point, drag across and click. Okay, so I can, or, or you can just go down and type one and enter. Okay, then I'm gonna right click and end that line. Wait, how did you, wait, do the, the center thing again? I thought you'd like to see that again. Ah, I forgot this is all one line, my bad. Zero comma zero, whoops. Look at that, I went back too far, thanks. And then I'm gonna go F8, 2.5, I don't care people. And then I'm gonna do a 0 0.69 comma, that's period comma one. Then they go, that's where I'm at here. Then we go across 0.24. Now, I'm gonna bring those line thicknesses back up. When I'm coming down, so get this as big as I can get it for you. You see these dotted lines? Yes, yeah. Okay, good. Those are projection lines, and they're used to make sure you're getting what you want. Now, you can do what's called an inferred snap. So if I bring my cursor over to this corner, notice the dimension that's in my dotted line. It's one. It's the value I want. So all I have to do now is come back over, follow the green line, and then left-click once. Okay? 
then I can right click and enter. That finishes that line. This is all one element right now. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we do. It, 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 well, it'll pick separate, but it was drawn at one continuous line. So when you hit undo, the whole thing goes. Okay. Yay. Okay. Now I'm going to bring the line across the bottom. We need that little line there. So it's a L for line and enter. And then grab the a bottom point, the first line I drew, the first end point, and then draw to the right. Okay, now this one we have to do some math. Okay, you guys remember what the length of that line was? 1.25? Okay, and we got that by taking 2.875 minus 0.625 divided by 2. And so now I just have to type in 1 decimal 25 and enter. And then right click and enter, and that ends my line. Okay, and now I'm in good shape. I'm feeling, feeling kind of happy. Okay, we have any at this point, we good? Okay, a little remediation day. Now, my next thing is I wanna flip this over and mirror it. And when I mirror something, I get exact copy, or I can use it just to simply flip things over. So if you're looking at designing shoes, all right, so I need to take and make a line that would be in the middle of this whole object, okay? So I need to do half of 2.875, and what's that value? Get your handy dandy phones out, because that's what they're for. So use in class, not to be sitting in your pocket buzzing, making me happy. 1.25. Does someone want to concur that value? Verify it, validate it. The original number is 2.875. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna do what's called an offset. That's done by typing the letter O. In other CAD programs, um, this is called parallel, but it still uses the O key as the hot key. So I want to ex uh, explain this one to you very carefully. And we're going to type in our value. In this case, it would be 1.4375. And we then enter that value in. Okay, we're going to enter that value in. We're going to select the vertical line we drew first. And then we're going to pick left or right. Which way we want to go? Right. So that puts it right there. Okay. Let's just click, click. Now, I'm still in this command. I could do this. I could click this and go here and here, and I just just keep going. Because as long as you're in that command, it's still going to do those mere repetitive things. Okay. Now, as a reminder, I need. I don't need those. That's kind of stupid. If I click my mouse, I hit escape and get out of the command. I click my mouse once. I can get a rectangle. If I hold it in, I have to draw a fence. You can do that. That's kind of fun. It's a crazy way to pick things to erase. But if you're bored, do it. I mean, it, I, it's good. Okay, and then all you do is hit, once you get things selected, whether you do a closed window, which means it has to be all inside, or a cross window, just has to touch it, then hit the delete key and they're all gone. Okay. You can also right click and go to erase. That works as well. Okay. Now I'm going to do a mirror command. Now the mirror command is up here in the, in the modify box. It's two triangles flipped over. Okay. And notice if you leave your cursor on an icon for a minute, it will tell you what it is and then show you what to do. The program will teach you how to use it. It's kind of brilliant. That's another reason why it's so big. They used to do that. Okay. So I click on the mirror command. The hot keys on my keyboard is MI for mirror. And I enter that in. I just want the drawing part. I don't want the middle line. So I'm just going to window around it. Select it all. It'll be a little blue shade, a little, little pixie. Blue. I used to call it peri, peri blue, but then it got a little weird. Okay. So you get it all selected. Right click to end the selection. Then you need to pick a point. Now I could pick any point on the screen. 
The reason I have the line is to make it so its distance is correct. I could pick over here and just pick two points. But if I go from end point and go straight up or straight down, I'm going to get that image the way I need it to, right? Okay. So I'm just going to go up or down, click again with the left mouse button. And I want to hit, do you want to erase the source? That's the first piece. Hit no. Okay, you want to keep both. You hit yes, you've got to flip it over the other way and do it again. Okay, how do I get rid of the line in the middle? We're not right now. Leave the line in the middle this time. Okay, last time I had you delete it, I'm going to have you keep it this time. How you doing, Griffin? You good? Uh, yes. You're waking so up far. slowly. What'd you have for breakfast today, man? Um, pretty much nothing. Cool, I didn't either. Isn't that great? <laughs> Yeah. It's wonderful. What time did you get up? Um, sometime right before seven. I don't know exactly. Oh, you when. got a lot more sleep. I got up at four fifteen. I go to the gym. I'm trying to make myself live longer. Um, well, you know, you know Planet Fitness is open all the time. <laughs> school gyms, no. Now they speak. You been to a school gym? They smell bad. Oh, they're cleaning them now. There's a little difference. In my day, the school gym never got cleaned. It was so rank. You go in the wrestling room, you stop die. All right, let's do a line. We're gonna do a line just across the base here. Um, and Sam, I did mute you. So if you need to unmute yourself to ask a question, just remember you can do that. But I, I muted you. L, enter, and go from endpoint to endpoint. Then right click and enter. Okay, now down here, and this come down this bottom piece. I need a gap here that's five eighths of an inch. That's 0. 0.625. What is half of five eighths? Oh, my head just blew up. Oh, take the eight, multiply by two. What do you have? 516. Can you do that? Okay, so let's do an offset, shall we? Let's do O, enter. Put in 5 slash 16. So put in 5 16, select the line in the middle, go to the right, and then select the middle line again and go to the left. Now, am I worried about this being longer? No, because some mistakes are good because we're going to fix them as we go. So this is a little long. Someone's math was wrong. Yeah, I know, but he was close. So in grenades and kissing, he would have been okay. He would have said the nose and said the lips, but that's okay. <laughs> Just don't suck when you do that. <laughs> okay. Now that's good. I'm okay with that. We're gonna fix these corners, okay? Because there's always a way to fix them. We're gonna do each corner a different fix, okay? So the first fix I'm gonna use is called fillet, right up here. If you eat fish, it might look like a fillet of fish. Now, what we're going to create is a sharp corner. I don't want to round that edge. I want to make a sharp corner. So if we activate the fillet command, and you can either press the button or the F key, we'll get the same place for you. Then I need to make sure I check the radius. So once you get the command active, look down here in the bottom. You got to get in the habit of looking at this command line because there's a lot of, a lot of stuff there. Okay, so you can look. You can do undo it. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. You haven't done anything yet. You can do a radius. You can do a trim, or you can do multiple at the same time. I just need one. So I want you to type R for radius, and verify that it's 0 0.000. .000. Okay, the default for AutoCAD is zero. When we get into SolidWorks, the default is 0.5. It's not zero. Because the only reason we're using this is to round an edge off. There's other ways to make corners in SolidWorks. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want you to go ahead and enter that in or right click on your mouse. The right mouse click is the same as an enter. I want this line, that's a good line. I'm going to keep that one. Now, I'm going to get really close here. If I go to this side, what happens to the line on the left? 
and that's not what I want. So pay attention and go the right direction. Okay, it'll show you. Boom, there's my corner, all fixed. I took off a sixteenth of an inch. On the other side, we use the other, a different command. Okay, this time I'm going to use the trim command. That is done by typing TR or getting the scissors. Scissors always scare me. Wait, not muy bueno. Not muy bueno? The fillet? Yeah. Okay, one second. Let's do that. Okay, there it's back again. Okay, ready? F, enter. Check and make sure your radius is zero. You can see that right in the command line here, right? Okay. Then select, I'm going to do the opposite way. I'm going to do bottom line, top line. So it grays out what's going to be removed. Here's your preview. You see that on your screen? So I click and it's gone. It just whaps that sucker right off. It's like a bad hangnail. TR for trim. That's re, TR, trim. Now, if we look at the command, it says select cutting edges. In other words, pick your knife. Well, what line would cut this piece off? The bottom one? No, the, top. the vertical, right? The vertical is going to be cutting through it. So pick the vertical line. I enter, I'm done picking knives, so I enter that in with the right mouse button. And then I move my cursor down by the line. Ooh, look, I can take that out or that out. And you get a preview. Click. Now, if you don't have a clue, you could always do a trim command. And you can just window the whole blooming thing. But then you might get lost. But, but you can. I mean, I've done this a lot. I mean, there's a, some things you can do there. Okay. Now, I'm ready to move up to where I have an arc over here. So on my drawing, it shows my arc has an undisclosed radius. Actually, what? Why does it not show my radius in my drawing? Yes. The, this opening is my diameter, right? So that's why it doesn't give the value. It's it's five eighths. Well, that's great. Good to know. How high up is it? To the top of that circle. I gotta pull this up so you can get your digital. To the circle in the middle or the circle down the towards the bottom, not the little guy, the radius. 0.81, thank you. You guys are smart cookies. That's what my mom says. Get that, just boop. Looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, that's great. So here's what you can do, okay? There's always fix. Type L for line. Now, you're going to type in the letters M-I-D for midpoint. You're just going to do an overwrite, okay? Enter that in. Come up to the horizontal line you have here. It's that little green triangle. That's the midpoint. Draw a line straight down. Doesn't matter how long you go. Okay, just like that. Um, doesn't matter. Just draw a line down. Okay. And then you can do your offset. Oh, enter. And we're going to do 5 sixteenths. And select that line you just drew. And now you have three lines hanging down there. That work? Almost. Okay, then you got to do some cleanup. So you can either the fillet or the trim. And it depends which move you're in. So it's the trim, grab. Wait, what's the command? TR. TR is trim. So just TR enter. Just TR enter, yep. Yeah, most of the commands are the first letter, the first two letters. There's a few that are the first three letters, and we'll get into those a little later. Can you see the distance of the lines on the program? Can you see the distance of the line here? Yeah, so is there like how you can click on it and it'll tell you how it is? Or yes, you want to know that? Yeah. Okay, extra bonus lesson. Okay, type the word LI. It's called list. Okay, enter that in, and then select your line that you want to find out about. Then right click to enter that and it brings up a list of everything about that line.
Whoa, like its coordinates, its angle, its length, its, yeah, everything about it, which direction you drew it. So this one is, has an angle of 270 because it went from the top down. If I went from the bottom up, it'd be 90. So it'll tell you everything you need to know. Cool, huh? And then you just click off of that into the drawing, it goes away. But LI, list, it's a good command. Yay. All right, let's do, yes, sir. To draw it down here? Yeah. I did line, L, enter. And then I forced it to get the midpoint, which is MID. And I drew it down. Okay, so I'm going to do an offset now of 81. So O, enter, 0.81. I'm going to take either side, doesn't matter. I'm just take one and go up. Just bring one bottom line up. Oh, yep, you got it, great one. I'm going to have to keep an eye on you. I'm starting to figure out your personality without telling a face. That's crazy. All right, now I want this line to actually go to the other side. So we're going to do two things to this line to learn a little bit more about AutoCAD, okay? One, I want to extend the line. There's three ways to extend the line. You can use the stretch command, you can use an extend command, or you can just get a grip. And we're going to do the extend, okay? So extend is done by typing EX. And I will almost always hit escape before I do a new command. You always want to clear your old commands out, and the escape key does that. Um, I've worn out a lot of keyboard escape keys doing that. Okay. So escape before you do a command. I hit EX and enter. I want this endpoint to go across. So this is where I want it to go. So it says pick your boundary. Pick where you want it to go. That's this line. I enter that in. Then I come back over the line I want to extend. It gets longer. Okay, and that jumps right over there. Okay, do you see that line that uh, when they said extended? Yep. The extend again? No, uh, Offset? Sure. O, enter. 0.81, enter. Select the bottom horizontal and go up. So then I did an EX, enter. Whoops, escape out, EX. Take a boundary. Now you could do this, you could window it. Enter those in and click, and click, and keep clicking. It's a little more work. Okay, and they use the grip to get the other side over. Okay? We good? You, okay. You have, to, you have to select the... The bat where you want it to go first. Pick the, the destination first. Yeah, so the destination is far right, and then you extend the middle one. Then enter that in, and then pick the line you want to lengthen. Dope, huh? Okay, now hit your escape key, put out all your commands. This horizontal line, go ahead and select it. Oh, there's my three little squares. Okay, the one in the middle moves it. I don't want to move it, it's where I want it. The ones on the end change its length and its angle. So this time grab the one on the far left and drag it all the way over till I get the perpendicular symbol of the side and click. Just let it drag over and hit this wall and click on it. I can. So again, clear your commands. Select the line that activates the grips. Pick the grip you want to move. Slide it over to where you want it to go. There'll be a little green perpendicular symbol. And then left click on that. Now you shorten the line. Woohoo. Okay, we're ready to make a circle. What? A circle? How you guys doing online? You good? I think so. Good. Thanks, Griffin. All right, now I've got an intersection point where two lines cross. It almost looks like a crucifix, but it's not. It's just crossing lines. Okay. There's nothing. <laughs> Someone's going to do a pentagram in here, I'm sure. All right, the circle command is up here at the top of the draw. 
the hot key is C. Just type C and you're in circle. Now, if you look at the command line at the bottom, you can do circles in multiple ways. There's a three-point circle, there's a two-point circle, or there's a tangent-tangent radius circle, which means you tend to two objects instead of radius and it fits. So if you're drawing the bike chain sprockets, that's how you do those. Okay. So I'm going to do a two-point. So I'm going to hit one there, and I'm going to do it by – so. Let me go back. I skipped three steps there. C, enter. And then type. Um, and I can just come down here to the command line and select it in the bottom of the command line there where it says 2P. Or I can type 2P because I want to do a two point circle. The default is to draw that by its diameter. So you pick a center point and draw it. So I'm going to do it by radius. So I type R and enter. And that point. Oh wait, I lied. It's a two point, not a three point. Sorry, two point. Don't worry about the radius; it won't work. And then grab the end point of one line and go over to the other side. Two point. Now, if I just did C and enter, not anything, I could grab the midpoint and pull out from the center. That's still a two point. Okay, so I've got two ways of doing the same thing: C, enter, and a two point I pick end point to end point that will work that's a viable way of doing it looks perfect the same thing as if you circle enter grab this intersection point and drag out to an end point so you just put the radius in exact same thing okay we good okay now Look at my drawing. I want the bottom half of the circle gone. I want this horizontal line gone. And these two top vertical lines gone. I want the bottom part of the vertical lines. And I want the top part of the circle. Right? What command am I going to use? Oh, it is too high. Who's saying that? You are so absolutely right. Thank you. I got to do a move. Yeah, I got to do a move. Thank you. I would have been really screwed over. That would have been bad. That meant my yoke would have gone in there too far in. It would have messed the whole thing up. Okay, so I got to do a move first. Nice catch. Yes, this is this is where the arc starts is up here. So I need to do a move. Okay, you ready? We'll do a move, then we'll do the trim. So you're right on the trim. We got to do a move first. So escape. M for move, select your circle, enter the selection, and now we need a quadrant. So type QUA. QUA lets you pick the quadrant of a circle. Take the top quadrant, should be as a, enter that in, you'll find a green diamond. Take the green diamond straight down to the midpoint of the line you have. So green diamond to green triangle. So does that look better? Ooh, now it's some weird shape. Looks like something about Harry Potter. Now we can do our trim. Okay. So I don't need this horizontal line anymore. I'm actually going to leave it for a minute uh, because I'm going to use it to put in that other circle. No, I'm not. What am I lying? Stop lying, teacher. Okay, trim command, TR. I'm going to window all that. And I'm going to use my green window because I want to select those vertical lines. If I do the blue, I only get the circle and the horizontal. So I need all of that. Okay, so I get those selected. Enter in your selection and now start removing the lines you don't need. And that last little bit you'll have to just delete because it doesn't cut anyway. So it should look like this when you get it all trimmed out. So nice and pretty and completely tangent. So if I was to cut this on the um, water jet, it would be a nice pretty chunk of metal, nice and smooth. Wouldn't cut me at all. Cool stuff.
Okay, we're almost done with this one. The trim. Yeah, there's my objects. So I'm going to type in trim, T R. That means that, that so let me let me cancel that question first. So I've got a line here, and then put a line here. I'm exaggerating a little bit, and a line here. None of those lines intersect. Okay, but if I take this line, if I bring it over to here, now I want to trim this line. So I'm going to do a trim. So I window all of it. I can. I can trim that line. I cannot trim this one. It's not being cut by anything. It just ends at it. But this one I can trim. So when it doesn't intersect, it means it just comes up to the end to the line, but doesn't go through it. In order to cut something, the knife has to go through it. Does that make sense? Do that, so no, nope. so you're talking about this little chunk right here? Yeah. Okay. Let me trim that and I'll show you. When you trim this and you trim these guys out of here and I do the circle down here and then I come in and get this line down all of a sudden this line is only intersected by the center well this one is too but once I trim that down this one is all by itself and so when I enter it in I just select and delete so those little extras that hang out you just select them and delete them Okay. You guys are getting it. It's gonna be good. Yes, sir. Can I help you? We got another circle put into this, and it's a little hole right here. This hole is actually for a pivot pin that we're gonna use uh, and create, and that is up 1.06 from the base, and so I need to put that value in. So we're gonna do an offset. And like I said, we're just gonna we're not gonna do this whole drawing because we're gonna, it's a lot easier to do a drawing like this in 3D now than to do all the views in 2D. And since we're blending the two classes together, we can do that. So it's gonna be good. We are gonna make this a dimension drawing though. So we're gonna go a little bit further than normal. That's okay. Okay, so O for offset. Uh, our value we're gonna use is 1.06. Add to the offset. Yep. O enter. 1.06. Enter. Select one of your bottom horizontal lines and take it up. And then bring it over to the middle line. Just extend it over. So you can extend it. Oh, let's just stretch. We have no stretch. S is the command for stretch. So think Mr. Fantastic or the elongated man for DC. He just got fired from the flash because he's a racist. And in this case, I'm going to bring a crossing window. So do S enter and then around the end point. I need the end point. That's what I'm stretching. So you have to use the green one for this. So then go to the left. So it grabs that end point. Then enter it in. Grab the end point and pull it over to where you want it to go. That's what the stretch does. You could have just used the grips. Absolutely. Yep, the grips have been a whole bunch faster. The grips are amazing. So if I just activate grips, I can manipulate a drawing big time with all these grips. Okay, so they're pretty handy. Okay, and where this end point is, I want a circle. And I'm going to come up here to my circle icon real quick and hit the down arrow. There's a little down arrow on your circle icon. So we can do a center and a diameter. 2.3.10 tangent, tangent radius or tangent, tangent, tangent. If you're doing fidget spinners, tangent, tangent, tangent is the only way to do it. Yeah, I, wanted, I don't think I want to do that this year. I did fidget spinners one year for a project. They got kind of expensive. Those bearings were pricey. Okay, so we're going to do a center diameter on this. Okay? It's a center diameter. So go ahead and click on that. Grab the end point of the line you just extended, and now you're doing a circle. Whoa! Whoa! OK, 
Okay, now the diameter, if we look down our command line, diameter is a pro primary. Um, the last diameter used was 5 eighths. So it tells you that. So if I hit enter, I may get the exact same thing I have below. So in these brackets, these bigger than less than symbols, that's the last value you typed in. And it carries through to every command. So you, that's why you want to always overwrite because you may screw things up. I want to bring this drawing over a minute. So I'm going to kick out of mine for just a minute. We're going to talk about dimensioning here a minute. So this dimension and this dimension are oddballs. Okay, this dimension could be um, anywhere within this range. This is called a tolerance range. So 1.010 up to 1.015. Why would I put a range in a gap like this? What would be a reason for doing that? Why, why two values? Let me watch, sign. yes, sir. A little bit of wiggle room, okay? Wiggle room is important. Have you guys watch Seinfeld? Is that too old for you? A little bit? Okay, so I can't use that example. When things get cold, what happens to them? They shrink. Everything except water. Water is the exception to that rule. Water gets larger when it freezes, okay? So when things get cold, they shrink. That's metal and wood plastics, all that stuff. What happens when they get hot? They expand. So if this is made out of metal, then depending upon the time of day or the season, we'll determine what this size actually is. And that expansion and contraction rate is, is standard, it's consistent. So we can figure out what that is and we can plan for it. So that's why there's a, an allowance here. If this gets too tight, then the part that slides in here, the column, will not fit because there will be no wiggle room. And, and you do want wiggle room, okay? Then we look at this hole right here. It has a value, 0.255, but it could be um, exactly that. So see it says zero here, no, nothing smaller than that. And nothing larger than 0.25 to 0.26 is the largest it can go. Okay, again, when you deal with a circle, circles constrict a different way. In the Old West, we used to make wagon wheels, and we put a metal ring around them, and then we rapidly cool that to pull the wood all together, right? So if we're putting a peg, in this case it's a pin, a round dowel, into that hole, the hole has to always be bigger than what the pin will be. Even though they're both made of the same material, and they're both in expand and contract, that makes sure the hole stays bigger than the pin. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at there. So we're gonna make our hole the exact value. You always make it the exact, and then what happens if they need a bigger hole if you design it the exact, what do they do? What's up? Suffer? Oh, that's sad. Um, has your dad ever ringed you out? You guys don't use that expression anymore? You've been reamed out? Well, yeah, it's kind of that. Yeah, it starts with that. Okay, so here's what reaming is. Um, doctors do it. Um, machinists do it. Carpenters do it. Okay? When you drill a hole into something like wood, and most of you, does that mean not drill a hole in wood? Everybody's done a drill? No? Okay. Um, have you cut a hole in a cake? Okay, is the inside smooth when you do that? Not really, right? What about if you drill wood? Is the inside nice and smooth? You can rub your finger around there? Depends on how, how sharp your bit is, right? Okay, but usually there's like burrs. So if you rent your fruit, would, we go around the circle in the direction you drilled it, it'd be okay, but you go opposite, you get splinters, right? Same on metal. So what reaming does, it's a fine, a finely sharpened bit that smooths that all out. So when we ream out a hole, we're, we're enlarging the hole, but we're also smoothing the hole. It's kind of like trying to sand the inside of a pipe. Okay? And that's what reaming does. Doctors do it with um, chemicals. They clean you out. 
if you haven't had enough fiber back to our first talk, right? Then you have to get reamed out, chilled out of it, okay? So we're going to just make this hole right here, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So again, it's a circle, center diameter. Grab the end point. Come on, circle. Right there. And you're going to type in 0.255. And there's your circle. Okay. Yay. Now the vertical line, delete. Horizontal line, delete. Whoa, you've done your first part. Kind of. Okay, kind of. Okay, so it should look kind of happy. <laughs> now we get into the fun stuff. I'm trying to think which way I want you to go with this. How much do I want to teach you? I want to teach you everything. Okay, let me um, do a little play time here. No, not really. No, don't thing is play time. All right, what we need to do is we're gonna go into dimensioning now. Um, we have been now here for 8.55. We have about a little bit of, does anyone need a break real quick before we start this next step? Yes, sir. All right, so yes, yeah, the 3D is coming. It'll be next week. So when you get into 3D, what we wanna do is we wanna make this into an actual drawing and granted, Typically, a drawing would have the three views to it, but we're learning constraints and geometry right now, not necessarily the drawing part. But what I want to get you used to is putting dimensions on it. So let me give you an idea. When we go into 3D, there are smart, we're called smart dimensions, and they will hold the drawing together. And the tendency for students is to delete them because they clutter your drawing. I want to get you out of that mindset. You need to leave the dimensions, okay? So that's what we're going to do dimensioning now is to kind of get you a feel for that, okay? So in our drawing that we're in right now, we are drawing it full size. There is no shrinking of it. There's no enlarging it. It will fit on 8 by 11 just fine. It's not that big. It'll be perfect, okay? So. What we want to do now is set up our dimensions. So we're going to go into the layer properties first. So here we go to layer properties. Somewhere a window's going to pop up. There it is. I want to make a brand new layer. So I click on layer. And this one is going to be called um, DIM. D-I-M. Dumb. That's short for dimension. And you can type out dimension if you want, if that helps you remember it. But it's a mirror dimension layer. Okay. Go ahead and move your check mark down so it's the current layer. Change your color so it stands out. Let's go to color two. And our line weight is going to be thinner. Um, the object lines of your, of your drawing are always thicker than your text and dimensions fall under text. The proper term for that is annotation. That's this guy right here, okay? So let's drop this down to 0.35, So I'm gonna make that line weight 0.35. And that gives us a difference between the two, okay? So I wanna make it sure it stands out. And then we can close off our properties. We're good there. So again, new layer, dim or dimension, change the color, change the line weight to 0.35. Skinny, skinny lines, yes. We like them that way, okay? But we're not done yet, okay? Will you come across the top of your drawing and find the word annotate and open that tab? Okay, so this is all things to do with dimensions. And it's a lot. And dimension is probably the most important part of anything we do. Because your drawing could be crap and your dimensions correct and the dimensions would govern. So if I had a line that was crooked but I told them to make it straight, I can do that with the dimension and it would hold up in court. Okay, so what we never let someone do is measure our drawing on paper. That's a no-no. 
we always read the drawing and use the values given to it. All right, so let's, we need to create a dimension style. So we'll start right here um, in this mill called dimensions. There's a little down arrow right here. So bottom corner arrow, just go ahead and click on that. Dim style manager. Okay, bring that up. Let's make sure you get all get there. Don't want to lose you. This is the crazy part. And I usually mess up on it, so you should do it twice. Where yes, sir. Okay, so you're in the annotate tab and find the dimension box, and it's this little down arrow in the bottom right hand corner of that. Does that help you? We might need one light on because it's hard to see you. <laughs> I'm glowing over here. I know, I know, I can get more light. I have a hard time getting everything turned on when I get here in the morning. You guys get here quick. There we go. That's a nice light. There's probably more. I'll find them. Yeah, we can do this light. This will work. Oh, no. Oh, no. My flashlight battery died. He's not spinning. <laughs> well, I want to do another one. There's always another way to light the world, right? You guys, I'm um, excited to work with LED lights. I'm ordering them this week. So that'll be fun. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we're all good. We can all see good. Um, <laughs> And a goofball. Um, my little Krypton light. It's all fun. All right, what we're going to do is everybody in that star box? You good? Okay, right now the standard is just like our units. It's very basic, doesn't have a lot of stuff in there. And what we want to do is make a new one. So we're going to make a new style. So click on the word new. And we're going to start with a copy. Oh, yes, sir. The stretch? Okay. we got to have a way of knowing stretches from hands. I don't know how that is. I don't know. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so we're going to make a new style. It's going to be a copy of standard. So we're going to start with this. We don't need it to be copy. We're going to change the name. Okay. And what we're going to call this um, is decimal. Because we're doing a decimal style. And we want to make sure it matches what we're doing. So then keep it straight. So give the name and then go ahead and hit continue. And things change really quick. Yeah, kind of cool. And we can we can do some major damage to things here. Okay, so let's start with understanding a dimension line and um, an extension line. So if I look on my drawing, we're going to start with the dimension lines. That is the line that has numbers in it on this little preview. So the dimension line usually has a terminator. In this case, the terminators are arrowheads. In architecture, they're tick marks. In structural engineering, they're circles. In um, civil work, they're a circle that's hollow, so just an open circle. If, and so they depend on which industry you're in, will determine what they look like. Uh, we're going to be messing with that a little bit as well. Uh, because I think I'm going to have you uh, just go with the arrowheads. Okay, now I want my dimension line to be a different color. I made my layer yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and make my dimension color yellow as well. Or whatever. You can pick any color you want, really. It doesn't matter. It's the same yeah, color as the layer we just made. Yep, for right now. Yep. Okay, then we have a line type. Now it says by block, but we're going to change that to continuous. So to notice your preview here is changing as you go. So it should have color on it now. The line weight on the dimension style, my layer line weight is 0.35. I want you to make this line weight 0.4. Ooh, I'm mixing up a big batch of whoa. 
Okay. Now, this next part here is kind of important. Right now, this is point this point three eight. That's a rounded up point three seven five. When we work in text, our text is always point one two. If it's just written text, if it's a title, it's point two. So point one two is normal text. Titles are point two. That's it. There's no other choices that you get, at least not at this point. Okay. So what I want to do if I have an eighth inch high text and my spacing between each row is 3 eighths, then if I do a fraction, they don't overlap. And that's the rationale behind this value. Okay, and we might have to tweak that a little bit um, so they don't get too crazy. So let's go ahead and just leave that at 0 0.38. That'll work fine. Now, the suppression line part is old school. We don't need to worry about that at all. So it used to be that if I did another dimension, then each of these lines would overlap. And the old plotters used felt tip pens. And every time you had a line over top of a line, it put the felt tip pen again, and they would bleed. We don't have that problem where we use laser jets now. Uh, we actually have three large format plotters in the plot room. And we'll go look at that here pretty quick um, in there with a bunch of big 3D printers, some really nice 3D printers. Um, when we do use those large part plotter, plotters, because we're using laser jet now, we can get really, really fine lines on there. So we don't have to worry about this at all. Okay, extension lines. That's the white lines that are on your screen still. They go from the part being dimensioned to the dimension line. So they're the boundaries, the markers, the goalposts, if you will. So let's give them a color, pick a different color so you can see them. And the line type on those will also be uh, continuous. Notice it's got two um, on there, line type, um, extra line. So there's one and two. You can have them different colors even, that's kind of crazy, but make sure the same line type. So they're both continuous in this case. These are much thinner. I want you to make these line weights 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So we're overriding the layer setting. The layer setting will work for anything we type as regular text, like your name, but this will override and take care of all the dimensions we do. Again, we don't have to worry about suppressing anymore unless you're using a pen plotter and there's not many of those left around. Okay, now see this little tail end of the arrow right here? So how your arrowheads are on the outside of your line. That is an extension beyond the dimension line. So it's just above Right now, this is 0.1875. That's a little much for me. You'll make that 0.12. I'd appreciate that. Make that 0.12. And that's just the little green line above the dimension line, how much it goes up. So then we'll 0.12. Wait, if I press enter, how do I get back in? Uh, go right back into the dimensions again and then. Well, here, I'll do it. I'll hit OK. I'll hit Close. So you then go in here. You're going to find the decimal, and you hit Modify to get back into it. Okay? Good job learning Spanish. It is the second most popular language in the United States. Yes, 0.12 for the extension beyond the dimension lines. Then offset from the origin. That's this gap from the um, object to the extension line, you have to have a gap there. Okay, it's generally a sixteenth of an inch, which is the default. That's kind of an, an American National Standards Institute standard. That's called ANSI, A N S I, American National Standards Institute. Get that stuck in your head. You get like three questions on every state skills test about that. It governs everything with design. It is governed by that. If you don't put a gap there and you send it to a CNC machine, a plasma cutter, a water jet, it will treat that as part of the object and will cut your dimensions out of your material. 
and then you've wasted a lot of material. Um, especially when going to use the laser. You guys are going to use the laser this semester um, quite a bit, actually. So um, you want to make sure you have those gaps so your laser doesn't just decimate your material. Uh, we'll be using some acrylic and some wood. The acrylic is $22 a sheet, so we don't want to mess that up. Okay. All right, so we have that set. Now we're ready to go on to symbols and arrows. Next tab. Next tab. Okay, so we're going to kind of look at these. You have first and second, one and two. Let's go ahead and see what options are available. So in er first arrowhead, you have field and blank and closed and dots and architecture ticks and obliques and opens and or origin indicators. This is for electrical. Uh, origin indicator two, right angles, open 30, small dots, datums, integrals. Whoa, a lot. Go ahead and make it an architectural tick so you can see the difference. When you change one, you change the second, okay, unless you override it. So typically, you want them both to be the same. There are some instances in, if you're doing circuit boards, where they'll be separate. There'll be different symbols because you're showing how one circuit board connects to another or how one electrical connector connects to the next part of that system. Okay. Now, because we're doing mechanical engineering in here, we will use the closed field arrowheads. Your leader line is a line that points from text to an object. It's going to have the exact same thing, so, there's, so there is a commonality between them all. And your arrow size, I want you to make that 0.125. It's going to be really feel tiny, but it's okay. 0.125. That's an eighth of an inch arrowhead. That is from the tip of the arrow to its heel. So an arrowhead has a, a head and a heel. Kind of weird. But yeah. So the back flat is the heel of the arrow. Okay, we're going to put on a center mark. Um, right now, this is a percentage. 0.9, that is this guy right here in the circle. It marks the center of circles so you know where to put your drill or your laser. So let's take that up and go 0.1 to start. See what that does. So it's a little bit bigger, not much. Go 1.0 now. Um, that change on your screen yet? There it goes. When you go one, it's then go through and make it large. Okay. So this is a full size center mark. These are percentages. If you do the 0.9 and click on your screen, oh come on, there it is. You can adjust that percentage. I'm going to do 0.8, enter. And so you can get that gap still. And a lot of times this is a static thing. Uh, for the most part, so you have to hit enter and I'll adjust it. Um, I'm thinking for what we're doing, 0.7 is probably going to be a good one. Okay, And I usually will go through that. I'll evaluate, make a choice. And that's how that works. You can dimension to a center line. You cannot dimension to a hidden line. And we'll talk about those when we get into 3D. Okay. All right, we have dimensional breaks. Uh, we're not going to worry about those in this one. Um, arc length doesn't apply to us. An arc length is a civil engineering system. So if I'm turning a corner in a road, I'm not going to mark down the radius of that road's circle. That's going to be like 500 feet or 500 miles or some silly weird big number. But what I will do is I'll use cord lengths. So I know the start and end of that radius because I can measure that without finding the center point of the right radius. So civil is a little bit different. Um, we don't need to worry about jogs. We'll be at 45. So that's pretty standard. Sit your text. Here we go. Yay, text. Um, right now on our text style, if we look down there, we've got annotative and we've got standard. We're going to leave ours on standard for right now. Go ahead and pick a different color for your text. Oh, I don't like that color today. Not feeling very blue. Yeah, that looks better. Ooh. Yeah, I guess. No, I'm not going to like that either. 
Oh, I'm so picky. I'll go white, whatever. I'm bored. Pick a color. Um, you do not need to do a fill color. We're not going to do a background on these, so leave that none. That that uh, means a whole bunch of different things. If you put a background on it, that means they are uh, guest dimensions, and you have to verify every one of them. And that usually ends up making your project cost 10 times more than what it should. So you try and avoid that. Occasionally, you do have to do a fill verify on site. So they may not know the exact part you're going into. So for example, if I was repairing a lawnmower and my curb guard has broken and I cannot buy a new piece, and I need to make a new one, I'd want to verify the clearance on that with the lawnmower itself. And so I'd have them check that before we cut it. Um, it's kind of a weird thing, project we did. All right, um, text placement is going to be centered in the dimension line horizontally centered and we're actually going to put that over so whoa that's crazy look what that did oh i do not like that so that's over the extension line centered this one we go above this line actually i like that better let's do above the line for this so on the horizontals it's going to be centered inside of it on or sorry the verticals on the horizontals will be above the line so it's easier to read you really try and keep your text out of the line if you can it makes it cleaner easier to read and helps with what's going on there okay now we're going to read left to right because we're in america and we tell we read but if you're working on something for Whoa. what for Whoa. japan you want to go right to left is crazy it does because you just turn the paper around there's really no way to put english into japanese by just flipping the text but because they're culture and where they read they'll read it from the other side of the paper than what we do so if you staple the left hand side they'll read it from the left that that direction so it just tries to make things a little easier um, in the United States, we just lay the drawings out on a, on a big old conference table and everybody figures out how to read upside down. So we just do that. Okay, we want our text to always be horizontal. Always, 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 always. Okay, you could align it and so it's at the angles. It just takes more space in your drawing and it gets confusing. So we're going to always be horizontal. Yay, team. ISO standard, this is the international standard. So when in doubt, use that, but notice it flips your numbers too. Okay, so if you wanna take a look at that, but we will always be horizontal. Now the offset, the distance from the text above the line right now is 0 0.09. That's a pretty good value. Um, a lot of times I'll drop that down to a 16th, 0 0.06 if, um, my drawings are tight. If I don't have a lot of space, we've got lots of space. We're not going to worry about that. Go to fit. Okay, now if they're like we have that little point two five dimension, so this says either fit the arrows or the text, whichever looks best. Um, we can always do arrows. So arrows are always on the inside, or text is on the inside, and notice how it will change your drawing when you do that. So here's the text on the outside, text on the inside. This is actually not a, a good way of dimensioning radiuses. So it comes from this radius out, which is fine. But if I switch this, the arrow must point to the center, always, okay? So if I'm doing just a, a radius on an arc, the arrow points to the center. So we're gonna put it on either text or arrows because we'll play with that and override it manually to make our drawings work. Um, over here, we're gonna use our scale. Right now it was one. We will change this probably on uh, two, Thursday. So we're gonna leave this at one for now. Go to primary units. Yay, primary units. All right. Yay, this is where it gets crazy. Okay, my units are right now in decimal. My precision, I'm going to drop that down to three decimals. So just pull that down. That also helps save you some space. 
Um, with your fractional formatting, because we're in decimal, we don't have fractions. Yay. That's a win. We don't like fractions. We can avoid them. Um, decimal set is separated by a period. Okay, here's a big one. Europe does not separate decimals by periods. They use commas. Uh-huh. So your period is not used in numbers at all. It's used in writing. So if we're using decimals, they'll use a comma. And that's why that option's here. When I teach um, college math courses and I have international students, they will get that messed up all the time. And Canvas doesn't designate between one or the other. So they'll put a like two comma four instead of 2.4 and they'll, they'll get it wrong every time. So it's kind of a pain in the neck. But we use a period for decimal separation. Europe uses a comma. So they'll have two commas in words. So we've got 1,050. It'll be one comma zero 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 comma five zero. Okay, so it's just a little different way of, of the world being there. Um, right now, we're not going to keep the scale factor at one. Everything's full scale, which makes it easy for you guys. Um, zero suppression. Okay, if I have a value less than one, I want a zero in front of it. If I put a leading zero suppression on there, then I lose that zero. In the work we're doing, because the number sizes we're using, you'll lose your value. So that could be R.805 right here. Um, that might be misread. They might think the period goes with the R, and then also get a radius that's 805. Okay. So in order to avoid error and be mainly because people work fast, we want to make sure we leave that leading zero on in mechanical engineering. In architecture, we take it off. So we know the difference between feet and inches, especially when we're making cabinetry. Okay. Then we have our decimal degrees and our precision for angles. We don't have any angles on this. Let's take a look at alternate units. What? We can actually have your drawing show decimal and metric at the same time. Uh, that's pretty common. We'll do that more in um, SolidWorks. But know that, that that function's available to you. You can actually show multiple different type styles of dimensions. And then we have tolerance values here. And we're not going to worry about those at this point. That's a little later on in the semester when you get a little more skill set. Okay, so go ahead and hit OK. And then make this decimal style, make it current. And then hit close. So now in our dimension box, it says decimal. It has a color, it's current, and we're ready to start putting dimensions on here. We're going to spend quite a bit of time laying dimensions because they're that important. Okay. All right, everybody with me now? Would I go slow enough? They get lost? So when you see the Uh huh. Yep, that's all you have to do. Yep, exactly. Exactly. All right. Now, when we lay dimensions, which is what we're going to do now, everything's kind of here. But if I click on the dimension box here, it just says start dimensions. Well, that doesn't really help me a whole lot. So, yeah, I'm doing a dimension, but what kind? So, uh, at the bottom, right where it says what your current is, you've got linear and a down arrow. You've got quick. And you got continuous. So let's start with the down arrow by linear. You can do aligned, angular, arc lengths, radii, diameter, jog. And the jog is if your radius is so big it doesn't fit on a sheet of paper, you foreshorten it or you make up a fake center point, which can be difficult. So Lily, on the on I-15, if they're doing a bend in the road. The center mark for that radius, if we're going around Point of Mountain, that could be over in Harriman. And there's no way to find that, and there's not a compass big enough to swing it. So we have to give them other information. Okay? Or we can do ordinate. You guys won't be doing ordinate here, but if you ever work on making circuit boards, circuit boards are always done in ordinate. We always start with one corner of the board and lay everything out from that. And we'll look at that a little bit, just a little bit. So let's do linear. Click on linear. 
And I need you to come over on the bottom of your screen, down where your settings are. Find the one with the circle and the, the square and the square, the snap cursor to be oh snap settings. So this little guy right down here. So it's a big square with a little square. Hit the arrow next to it. We're going to try and make this a little more user friendly. We're going to keep center, midpoint, endpoint, and perpendicular only. Just those. Take all the others and turn them off. And they're toggles. So you click to turn them off and on. And actually then add quadrant. Put quadrant in there too. Okay, so endpoint, midpoint, center, quadrant, and perpendicular. Just those. Okay. So this is an area where if you had some like nearest, you'd go nuts, make it psychotic because it picks, picks every pixel. Okay, here we go. First dimension, ready? Okay, linear. Start from the end point on the side and go all the way up to the highest end point and slide that off to the side. Boom, 3.5. Now, I'm going to turn my line weights off so it looks a little better. Notice my arrows do not thicken with the line weight. They stay consistent. So there's my arrow. There's my value. Looks good. And I pulled that out quite a bit. We're going to play with this dimension for a minute. There's my 16th of an inch gap. So you can see that. There is a little dot right there, which is actually a grip right there. I can move that off the drawing. What? It doesn't have to be attached to anything or I can put it back on the drawing. So these dimensions are dynamic in that they change with what you do to it. It's kind of mean, but we can do that. Okay. Notice how the dimension's horizontal. So it's readable and it's all in. Now that is too close to the object. This is my dimension what's called an overall height in this case, it needs to be furthest out from my object. And usually you'll do those last. Oh, so let's change it. Okay, so wow, what is weird? So what we're gonna do is then grab this topmost extension line. That green line is an extension line. Take the grip and move it down to the next corner. You have to have grips. The code doesn't work without the grips. Okay, here we go. So I need a dimension. From here over to here, and that's the point nine three three. Now the other, like you said, doesn't fit. So it's going to jog that over to the side, but notice it's in that, dement, that extension line, okay? So if I grab the grips and get the blue one on the text, move it the other way. Okay, just put it where it needs to be so it's out of the road. Okay, now I need one more. What's the next dimension I would need? And I'm just going to pull these down a little bit, clean it up. I need the overall width. So just like on our drawing, so it's another linear. Oh, it's weird in Denmark. Okay, so here we go, linear. Oh, I got so much of this garbage, little dots. Okay. So I'm gonna go from one side all the way to the other. I need this overall value. Okay, now notice how these are stacked. Nice and clean, easy to read. Okay, let me see. Yes. Now, I miss when we, we're doing architecture, things get a little crazy. Let me do something to show you the other one, okay? So this is demo only. A little cityscape. Okay, let's say I had a teeth way going this way. If I go into my dimensions, I'm doing a linear, and I know I'm going to go from here 
to here. I can then hit continue and I can just hit endpoints. Okay, that's more of an architectural need. So in architecture, we over dimension everything. In mechanical, we under dimension. Again, you want your manufacturer to verify everything they're cutting. Everything they're cutting. What time do you guys get out? 10.15, cool. All right. Now, we're gonna do this circle stuff down here. So, um, see the center mark here under, underneath your annotate? Click on that, then select your circle. And do the same thing on the arc. Now you got your center marks. Oh no, now I got dimension. <laughs> okay, so from the starting point to that point, there's the value we didn't have. And we then do a distance going up, so another linear. And actually, you can just keep going. If I go from here to there, there's my 1.6. And if I right click and repeat, end point to the quadrant, there's my other value. Now these are getting a little tight in here, right? So once you place it, then you can come back and adjust it. Okay, doom, 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 doom. starting with the center mark. You said repeat all that, that was all one lesson. Well, slapping. Okay. Well, my goodness. You go out to ice cream and everybody leaves you, don't they? Okay, mark your center marks. Then you then do your linear dimension to get to the center point. We need to know where that center is. So it's, I, linear, right? it's linear, yep. So I bring that value in. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. Okay. And now I'm going to go up to my verticals. So I'm gonna right click and just repeat the dimension linear. And I go from this end point up to the quadrant. And there's my point eight one. And now I'm gonna get the center of the circle above, still linear, right click, repeat the linear. Get that center mark. I'm gonna have to bring that one out because it's not gonna fit here. So I'm gonna pull that out a little further. So I can see it. And now I, the last thing I need, but really the last thing I need on this is I need to know the size of the circle and the size of the arc. So you ready for a different type of dimension? Cool. Up to underneath linear, hit the down arrow, and you're gonna go down to radius first. And you pick the arc. And then put that radius in, that missing value. And then you go up to radius again and choose diameter and pick the full circle. Okay, if the drawing shows a full circle, you use diameter. If it shows an arc, you use radius every single time. Okay, every single time. Okay, I want you to save this. I'm gonna clear that up. Go ahead and save this. We're not done yet, so don't shut down. Okay. This is the base. Yep. Say this is the base, Brian. So I'll save mine. Oh, I did a bad thing there. Dang it. So I'm going to save as. This is going to be base. Can't spell base. Base one. Okay. I want you to open up a new drawing real quick. Okay. I've got. A few minutes with you still. And I got 400 emails in the last 10 minutes. <laughs>